Well, hello, friend, and welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in the Ark. I just put out that Feast of Trumpets video the other day, and, well, I've been just creating shorts off of those videos like the Holy Spirit told me to. And today's the other day that they said Feast of Trumpets was, because there's a contradiction in terms there on which day it was, but the Holy Spirit told me to put it out on the 15th, so I did because that's when it started, 15th at sundown. Now others say it's the 19th at sundown, right? So that means that I believe today, if I recall correctly, is the 19th. So it really doesn't matter, because it never really did, friend. Because my father's like that. He'll do whatever he wants the way he wants, but he does everything according to this calendar, and I don't understand it all, but he tells me that I'm supposed to follow him, and I do. <laughs> so, so far, so good. Well, I love being here because you get the beautiful view of the lighthouse, and I get the beautiful view because I'm on a cliff that's about 100, 200 feet tall up off the water, and it makes for a beautiful view. So, quite often for you to get the view, I don't get it while I'm on the camera, and or vice versa, so it's nice when we both get a view, right? <laughs> that's what God wants. He wants us all to win. And that's why he created it the way he did, so that we could win, friend. So it's a, it's a choice we have. Jesus told you the whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? But Christianity has followed Old Testament and Paul, and I'm telling you that Jesus told you that he was in the Father, and the Father was in him, and it said that he was the Word made flesh, and so I'm not sure why it is anybody's following Paul. Now, Paul was came to the early church so that he could get them on track, right, because Jesus' words weren't even really written down at the time, and, you know, he had to go out and start it. But understand that just because Paul said in Galatians especially, I was sitting there just reading that yesterday, about how the those that follow the law are under the law. That's not true. There was 400 and, or 613 laws, friend, that the Jews followed. And back in the day, for you to become a Jew, you would have to become circumcised, right? So he said that you don't have to become circumcised, and that it's supposed to be your heart that's circumcised. So it's not about the law, but the Ten Commandments are to be followed, period. There is no way around that, friend. It's said right in the Old Testament that the law, that the Fourth Commandment was a commitment between his God and his people forever. So if you're Christian and you're not God's people, well, then that's okay. Then you don't need to follow that law. But if you do here at the end of the age, friend, I highly recommend you go notice that you're supposed to wear God's seal on your forehead, and a seal has name, title, and territory, and my Father is maker of heaven and earth. So God, maker, heaven and earth, name, title, territory. So it's important you understand that. Because right now, he's going to hold you to that because you can see a Christian nation proclaim to be a Christian nation, and one nation under God, and put their his name on their money, and we've turned this into insanity. So he gave us the opportunity to see that without the law that we're going to fall, right? So, because nobody even understands what the words covet mean, friend, including me. I had to go look it up, right? So covet means to desire your neighbor's things. Well, everybody prays to God desiring his neighbor's things, but if you follow Jesus and you follow and do what he asked, a greater truth's going to emerge, right? And then you won't be seeking out things of this world anymore because Jesus told you to be in the world but not of it. So if you're not going to make that choice, you're not going to make it into my Father's kingdom because he was looking for the spirits of love. That is what he is harvesting. And Jesus told you that over and over. But he hid it in parables. And I want you to know that Jesus said that he was going to speak in parables so they don't understand, lest they turn and be forgiven. And he, or in other Bibles, it says that they will be ever hearing 
and not here, right? So if you didn't go read those parables and get to know Jesus for yourself, you believed in the Pharisees, and he told you not to do that. So the Pharisees, when he was judging the Pharisees of the Jews, he was judging a thought system. Now you have all these Christians standing on the steps to the temple, judging gay people and all these people, and they weren't supposed to do that. That was never what Jesus said. He said, don't judge. You don't know how to judge. Only the Father knows how to judge, right? Then he said, my Father won't judge you. He sent me to judge you. Then he said to the Pharisees, I won't judge you, but if I did judge you, I would judge you rightly because I would judge you by my Father's standards. Then he said, I won't judge you because I came to save you, but another will come at the end of the age. So what he was telling you is that another one's going to come at the end of the age and tell you what Jesus said and what he meant, and it, you were going to be held accountable to the standards of your king, not the standards of Paul and not the standards of Moses, that Christ laid it out. He told you, if slave to sin has no permanent place in the kingdom. If that's a lie, friend, then Christ is a liar, and therefore Christianity has just crumbled under my words yet again. So now you can decide, is Christ your king? And are you going to abide in kingdom rules? Because if you're not going to make that choice now, you're not going to make it at the end of the age. Because he told you that when the bride awakens, that many wouldn't have oil for their lamp. And that's the reason I'm telling you these things are going down about the corporations. I'm not doing all this to scare you. I have no desire to scare you. Unfortunately, because the church will not listen to the truth of what Christ said, and they listen to these Pharisees tell them a bunch of lies... They're not ready. They don't have oil for their lamp. Their lamp needs to be full of oil, which is love. Love and forgiveness. That's what you're supposed to choose. You can choose judgment, which falls under fear and selfishness, because you said you're right. Then my father has to judge you for that, right? Because let me explain this to you. If my father knew the end in the beginning... And he created you and the people you're calling evil anyway. And you judge those people as evil. You're judging my father for creating them. And because you judge him for it, he's going to judge you. So that's just the simple facts. However, he isn't going to do it because it's Christ that breaks the seal, friend. My father's been loved since the beginning and he'll be loved at the end. His children do it so that he doesn't have to. The moment you see my father in the beginning, well, then you'll know the truth of why it is he does what he does, and you'll see that this whole thing requires a dichotomy because there's no free will for you to choose to love him. And atheists go, well, where's God? Well, he's hiding until you choose him over the world. Then when you choose him over the world, you'll find it. And you don't have to worry about what the Old Testament says about Jesus. I'm telling you, if you go do the things Jesus asked, You will find a greater kingdom and you will become convinced that he's the firstborn son of God merely because he's the greatest psychiatrist ever. He told you he came for those in need of a doctor. So he came to help you get out of hell, which is a state or place of mental suffering. If you don't choose that, then you're going to end up being in it at the end of the age. Because if your eternal life had no meaning to you, then he told you to much that's given, much is required, and him that gives nothing, even what he has will be taken away. So if you're dead seed, like if you fell in the brambles or on the path and the bird came and ate it, or your shallow soil and you didn't fall into, you know, because he gave you those parables. Every parable told you you were accountable. So it doesn't matter what the Pharisees say. He told you if you didn't fer- fall in fertile soil that you were going to become dead seed, which is the same thing he said when he told you that the demons would be cast from you, meaning your sins and your guilt, that if you let your house sit empty, that they would return. Well, if they returned, well, now you're accountable again, right? Because salvation isn't once, it's every day. Every day you wake up and choose the kingdom first. Jesus told you a student is not greater than his teacher. It's enough to be like him. So if you want to be like him, not only go read and see what he said, But watch how he did it. See that he gave you every example possible to show you the truth. But it was only for those that chose it, because my father has to give you free will. If he takes that away from you, then my father doesn't know his love by experience, and you won't know yours. You see, I know my love for my father because I'm willing to sacrifice the world 
for him. And he knows my love by experience, which is his, because I'm willing to sacrifice the world for him, right? So me and him are both knowing my love by experience by me giving it to him. Yet before this, my love wasn't that great, and this really isn't my love, it's his, right? Because I can't claim any righteousness for any of it. But I was helping people out of hell. That was what he put me at the task to. I was helping people out of a place of mental suffering. And that's what you do. That's what he asked you to do. That's being a fertile soil for his seed. And if his seed didn't find fertile soil, then it died and you remain selfish instead of choosing love over selfishness. Because just like I told you the other day that Jesus said that he who falls on the rock and be broken to pieces or else you're going to have the rock fall on you and you'll be crushed. So at the end of the age, the rock is going to fall on you and you're going to be crushed. Or you can choose now to fall upon the rock called Christ and allow yourself to be divided in two. Satan is selfishness, Christ is love. Choose the thought of Christ, choose the thought of love and forgiveness. Choose selfishness, choose fear and selfishness, right? And, and then you, over here, you can be as righteous as you want. You can judge people, and, and my Father's going to let you do it, and you're going to get to do it right through the end of the age. And he's going to pour out bowls, and you're going to be here to experience why it is that you should have forgiven them their debts just as Christ free gave you yours. So that's what I'm telling you. I'm not on here judging you. I know I sound like I'm judging you a lot, but I'm really not. I'm just trying to tell you the truth so that you'll accept it before it's too late, because my father is going to let you choose whatever it is you ex choose for yourself. It's a free will choice, so you get to make that choice. But if you're not willing to do the things he asked and find a greater truth, then you are dead seed. Don't think that just because you said Jesus died on the cross for you and you go to church once a week, that gave you rights to the kingdom. Jesus didn't tell you that. He told you, do not listen to the Pharisees, that if your righteousness does not exceed theirs, you will by no means enter the kingdom. He was judging a thought system, not a people. And if you go look at what he said, and then you go apply to what he said to the current church, you will see wolves in sheep clothing everywhere. You'll look to the left and the right of you in your church, and you'll probably see them everywhere. It's important that when you see that there's wolves in sheep's clothing, understand that Jesus told you that you were supposed to judge the church, not the nation because the nation won't turn because the church has become full of hypocrisy and and is so unclean and the Pharisees are getting caught doing all kinds of stuff on television so nobody will turn. So that's not their fault. These atheists have a legitimate reason on why they're not choosing Christ over the world because religion has become insanity. So I want you to recognize that the Ten Commandments were never negotiable. That's why they were written in stone. So you really do need to go read and study and understand what those Ten Commandments are and stop worshiping idols and stop coveting your neighbor's things. And instead put my father first and the other would like it, which is put your neighbor first. Except for you can't put your neighbor first because you have to put you first and your neighbor first. It, it gets complicated, friend. It's all about love and forgiveness. If you love you, you're going to love them. And if you love them, you're going to love you, right? Well, I've got a horse fly here. So anyway, friend, just know that I love you because my Father loves you. And I want you to find this kingdom, and I want you to look before it gets too late. Because Jesus told you that there was going to come a time when it was going to be too late for you to go to the store and get oil. So I'm asking you to just go get oil. I'm asking you to read what Jesus said and do what he asked. Go feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those that are sick and in prison. There's all kinds of things you can be doing to make this world a better place. And if you believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit will come to you and testify to you about him, and then he will give you a purpose. And whatever purpose he gives you is the one you have. That's it. I'm not here to tell you what your purpose is. You're not supposed to ask me. 
Christ told you that the Holy Spirit will tell you. So you seek him out. You seek him out by believing every word Jesus said was true and then start letting Jesus testify to you about him. Because the Pharisees say that his words have passed away and Jesus said that his words would never pass away. So you're going to really have to believe the Pharisees are him. You have a choice. So anyway, you're going to have to make your take your pick, friend. All right, well, just know I love you because my Father loves you, and may God bless you and yours.